Welcome to Bro on the Global Literary Beat, Breaking Glass with one of the deans of Scandinavian crime writing, what is sometimes called Scandi Noir, Gunnar Stalzen, creator of the private detective Varg Veum, Varg meaning wolf, and Veum is a tenacious beast when he pursues a case. There's even a title in his series called At Night All Wolves Are Gray, based on Hegel's At Night All Cows Are Black, and the latest book is titled, Outside Are the Dogs, based on a quote from the Bible's Book of Revelations. There are 20 books and 12 films featuring Varg Veyam, and all the books are not just detective stories, but also examinations of aspects of Norwegian society, particularly as is often the case with noir novels involving corruption of officials. As one critic said, Stalzen is the author who most consistently combines social criticism and criminal literature in Norway. So, can you tell us how you came to create the character of Varg Veyam and why you think it's important for the series to deal with social issues? Well, uh, it's uh, 43 years since I started writing uh, this series, so it's a long way back. <laughs> I was always very interested in uh, crime fiction uh, from when I was a young kid, starting with uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, stories and uh, reading a lot of, uh, not at least American uh, um, classic uh, crime writers, uh, Raymond Chandler being, of course, the greatest name among them, I guess. And uh, when I started writing, uh, I was inspired too by the Swedish uh, couple, Sjöval and Valle, which really uh, made a big difference of crime fiction uh, when they wrote the 10 books about Martin Beck, because they, they um, uh, made it possible for modern writers to use crime fiction not only as entertainment but to paint the picture of the society we live in and take up the conflicts of this society and themes from that. So when I wrote my first um, two uh, crime novels they were police procedurals and they were uh, more in the style of uh, Cheval and Valle but literary I was much more fascinated by Raymond Chandler and Ross MacDonald. And of course, Dashiell Hammett, the big uh, three names in American crime fiction, in my opinion. And um, uh, then I, uh, did, I, I did an experiment, I called it, because I was not sure if it was possible to um, transform this um, typical American private eye to Norway in the 70s. Um, so... Uh, uh, if one read my very first book in this series, which is not translated into English yet, um, you will see that perhaps it is an element of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, perhaps not a parody, but uh, uh, being a little bit unsure if, this, if it is possible to have this American uh, uh, type, American uh, private detective in Norway. But uh, because the societies are very different, uh, uh, United States in, and LA in the 40s and 50s are quite different from Belgium in the 70s and uh, uh, later on. But um, I wrote the novel and it was a big success. And no other readers, no other critics um, asked a single question about this uh, character. They accepted him and of course I have, I have made him uh, a typical Norwegian uh, character at that time he is not uh, running around with a gun uh, if he did that in Norway he would be arrested by the police and he he, um, he uh, is in by the way of thinking and uh, he, all his aspects of life I think it's more typical for uh, social democrat from uh, Scandinavia than um, the typical American private detective of the 40s and 50s. But of course there was a literary style that you can recognize. And, uh, and I gave um, uh, both Philip Marlowe or Raymond Chandler and Lou Archer or Ross MacDonald, they had their background from police work. Uh, but um, I found out that my Norwegian detective should have quite a different uh, background. So he has been a social worker. He has been working for children and the department of, uh, who take care of children in uh, Norway and in the local districts. So um, uh, his background is quite different from uh, Philip Marlowe and Lou Archer, but he is, cre he is cl quite clearly uh, inspired by an, uh, um, a Norwegian relative of uh, these American detectives. 
Okay, thank you. Um, one of your books, We Shall Inherit the Wind, uh, has Vayam involved in the north of Norway with a murder surrounding the installation of a wind farm and how it is being protested. Most Americans and British, uh, the audience here, would think that wind is a safe energy source, but your book shows how wind farms may desecrate the coastline. Uh, is that an issue in Norway? And what kinds of energy issues are sort of crucial there? Well, uh, just at the moment when we talk, there is a big discussion in Norway still about wind farms because uh, wind farms create good energy, of course, uh, but they also, they kill uh, seabirds. Uh, they, uh, it's not very beautiful in the landscape and a lot of people come as tourists uh, to, especially the western coast of Norway, to look at the landscape. They don't want to look at the wind farms up in the mountains and along the, co uh, along the coast and in the deep Norwegian fjords. Uh, and also they make a lot of noise. So you can see there is a lot of criticism against uh, wind farms and uh, what we are working for now in Norway is to to uh, place these wind farms out in the sea. Uh, when the oil will stop coming up from the North Sea, we will have wind farms, I guess, uh, outside the Norwegian mm -hmm. coast, is what wow, a lot of people work and know. Because, you know, from, from old times, the most important energy in Norway is from the waterfalls. Because we have uh, very steep waterfalls that have created electricity in Norway in the last hundred years. They are still uh, our main uh, our main source of uh, energy. Uh, then we have some wind farms, and we will I guess we will uh, have some more. But uh, I hope most of them will be placed in the in the ocean. And and as you say, this is the background of uh, one of my novels. And and this is how I very often work. I I create a traditional mystery, a traditional crime uh, crime novel um, as a way of of uh, tell about uh, a theme uh, or a conflict or a, uh, something in a uh, daily life of uh, today. And I compose a novel um, with these elements as uh, as two more or less uh, important uh, important elements. Okay, thanks. Um, location and a sense of place is very important in your books. Veyam is is um, not in Oslo, but in the smaller town of Bergen. And inherit the wind. He's visiting the uh, as you said the northwest coast. Almost uh, every indenture of the coast is lovingly described in the novel. How do you create such a specific sense of place? Well, I guess uh, this is uh, not particular in uh, crime fiction. When I read my Sherlock Holmes stories as a young boy and still reread them uh, from time to time now, I can see that it's a very strong image of London in the 1890s that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle created. And when you read uh, Raymond Chandler, Ross MacDonald, you get a very strong image of the landscape on uh, the west coast of the United States. So, uh, and, and uh, you live in Paris, uh, Maigret, uh, when you read the novels of Simenon about Maigret, you can really feel uh, uh, the atmosphere of uh, Paris. So, in this uh, aspect, I'm going into the tradition of uh, crime fiction uh, during all years. Uh, but of course, um, what is special for Norway is that most of our tones are not very big uh, and we have the nature very present all the time. When I live in Belgium, which has a population of 270,000 uh, people, uh, I'm surrounded by seven mountains. I have a fjord just outside. I can take a funicular up from the central town. It takes me seven, eight minutes to come up at the top of that mountain and then we can go into a, a forest. We we can, after the forest, we go up in the free, country, free mountains and we can go on, a, on a, some sort of mountain plateau to the next mountain. So and nature is always very present for Norwegian people. And, and uh, we are, if you see historically uh, on it, we are a people uh, based on uh, peasants and uh, fishermen. Uh, mm. So, uh, so uh, uh, the, no, the nature and the weather, the change in weather, has always been very important for uh, Norwegian people and then Norwegian readers too. But I guess when you read it as a foreigner, you will see an exotic uh, country. It's a country that is quite different from, uh, from a lot of other uh, European or uh, other countries in the world.
Yeah. Um, Bart Vaham also appears in 12 films, the first six packaged as two seasons of a television series. How involved are you in the films or television series and what do you find is the main difference between your character on the page and on the screen? Well, I was not very much involved. I sold the rights, uh, but uh, then I, I had a very good uh, dialogue with uh, both the directors of the first films and also mainly with a with a actor playing uh, Vagvim, uh, Tron has been same, and he did a lot of uh, background research work before he started playing uh, uh, playing the role. And um, and uh, but but um, when I saw the uh, result of uh, the work, I saw of course that they had changed the stories very much. Uh, it's much more action. Uh, it's not so much. Uh, uh, reflections, uh, not so much uh, dialogue uh, uh, as in my books, and uh, some of the stories I have changed totally. So, uh, if you, m most Norwegian people who see this uh, or saw these films, uh, all of them react, but this is quite different. It's almost not uh, the book at all. Uh, so, uh, and that's okay because they made, uh, they made uh, popular and uh, good films, but they are. Quite different from the from the books. No, there is a new uh, there's a new uh, company that uh, are planning a new series about Vagvim with, uh, mm -hmm. but that will be uh, um, eight uh, six or eight episodes in one series with the same story and also inspired by the later books. But uh, this time I'm more involved in uh, in uh, the development of uh, the material up till today, uh, and even I will think I will write some of the dialogue at least and I will uh, be involved in uh, the plot, uh, uh, the development of the plot. So uh, I hope this will be closer to the uh, Valvium in the books. The biggest difference between Valvium in the, in the films and the book is that in the films he is of course much more uh, an action character uh, and he is younger than my Vagvim today, because um, Vagvim is a chronological hero, so he has grown older during this series. Uh, but he was 34 years in the first book, and uh, Tron Espen Sein was exactly 34 years when they made the first film. So you can say they started back in the beginning. But uh, today, the, the book right now, uh, Vagvim is in, in his early 60s. So he has grown older during the series. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, just one more question. Would you say that the uh, films lost a little bit of their social uh, impact or their, their consideration of social problems? And do you think in the next series that will be uh, way, that will weigh heavier on the series or have more to do with the, this show? Well, yes and no, because I think that uh, a lot of the social um, social aspect was uh, kept in the films. They, they, okay. It was more the, the plots and the, the the way of telling a story that was much faster than in the, in the books. And of course, they couldn't go so deep into the social themes as I do in my book, because if you if you write the book of um, uh, around uh, 300, 350 pages, you can tell a lot more than in a, in a film that takes 90 minutes uh, to play. So, yeah. so uh, at least going in the, in the depths of the, of the theme. But, uh, but uh, I think it was more the, the different plotting uh, that uh, was the most different from, uh, from, the, from the books. Okay, 